Hi, this is Eli Kransberg from Logic Pro Expert. Bass drops. They're fun, they're useful. We've heard them in all kinds of music. And especially when there's a really short, quick pitch scoop descending in the low range, they can really enhance downbeats and kick drums and basses. And in this video, we're going to look at some fun and creative ways to create them. Now, I have an empty project and an empty instrument track here, and I'm going to start off by calling up the test oscillator, and it's at the top of my menu here, but of course, it's also available in Utility. Let's call it the stereo version. And I'll mute it. Now I have a limiter on my output and that's the one thing I have just to limit the output because as we're working with this, we can easily clip the outputs, which I don't want to do. I'm going to go to sine sweep. So I don't want a straight test tone. I want to sweep. So I'll put it on and it's only going to get triggered when I press this button. So I want it really short. I'm going to go to one second and I want to start. I like about 96 or so but you can easily tune this to the pitch of your song if you want to. And I Googled quickly a chart in Wikipedia and you can see the individual notes and the specific frequencies. So I'm looking at somewhere around a G at 97, but you choose whichever pitch you want based on your song or just on what sounds good. And I want to go all the way down to 20. That's the lowest this goes to. So let's listen to this. So that's the foundation of our drop. And just to give you an idea what this sounds like, here it is higher. And of course, you can have it longer if you want. And you can start it a bit higher for a drop. Somewhere around there could work nicely too. For a long, slower one. But I'm going to keep it at one second. And I'll start it a little bit higher just so we can hear a bit more of the meat of it. Now, after this, here's where the fun starts. We can put different plugins on to process it. And I'm going to start with a bit crusher. And let me leave this open in the background just so we can trigger it. Let's leave this all the way down at one and let's drive it way up and let's listen. And you can see I'm clipping the output with that. Let's do a little less mix, maybe less drive. And you can experiment with the different down sampling variables and resolutions. They'll have slightly different qualities. We get more harmonics there. I like it all the way down at one. It's nasty and gritty. It breaks up a lot. We can keep the resolution higher if we want. So that's fine for now. Now, after this, I'm going to put on an overdrive plugin. And here we can drive the signal even more. So let's really crank this. And I'm going to set the tone higher. Actually, let me lower the output first. So it just adds more gain and drive and all around nastiness, which is what we want to it. So there's a more full range one rather than filtering it out, which we might want. You might like that to have a darker one, but I'm going to get to that in a moment where we run a filter afterwards. So I'm going to leave it full range for now. Let's leave something like that. And you can see we've got lots of headroom. I can crank the output a little bit. All right. So. Next in line, let's put a modulation delay. And again, I have these at the top because I've been using them and they're in my recent list. But if you look under modulation, you'll see modulation delay there as well. I'm going to start with the stereo version and let's just hear it at the default value. Beautiful. We got a nice stereo kind of chorusy effect. Here it is without it. But to make this more interesting, let's switch this to the dual mono version. So now we can set left and right separately. So right now it should sound the same. Let's go to the right side and run this LFO in the opposite direction. Ooh, nice and wide. We can play with the different feedback times and intensities and even rates to get more variance. All right, that's working fine, but of course it's fun to play and experiment with those. Next, let's put on a tremolo plugin. And that's going to be under modulation as well at the bottom. Here, I'm going to go with stereo. That also could be fun using different amounts on the different sides. But for now, let's stick with something around there. So we get a panning from side to side. Okay, that's a little too deep. There we go. So you can hear the subtle movement from left to right. Or more dramatic. 
I like it somewhere around there. All right, that's working fine. Next, and finally, let's add in from the multi-effect section, step effects. And here, I want to get a little bit of filter movement happening. So this is my default patch. Let's just listen to it. All right, we're going to modify it. I'm going to start by turning off the reverb. Your default patch might be different depending on if you've changed your factory default here. I think this is the original, but I'm not certain. All right, so that's interesting. I'm going to go to a more traditional LFO ramp, and I'm going to go to a downward ramp, and it's modulating the filter cutoff here, which is what I want to get my kind of downward cutoff. So you hear how it's getting darker? Now, the problem with this is that when we trigger this with the plus button, it's not necessarily starting at the beginning of the cycle. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to make it faster. Let's set the rate maybe at 30 second notes. So you see, it's not really starting at the right place. So what I'm going to do is just create some automation here so that we can trigger it where need be. I'm going to go to test oscillator and the sweep trigger. That's what I want to automate here. So there's my off value. And let's put this right at bar four. I'm going to go to snap automation. Let's go to the snap settings here and just enable snap automation. I'm going to make it quarter notes for now. And there we are right at beat one. So now I'll just do that and it'll trigger it right at the start of the LFO pattern. So you hear how it's sort of getting darker, meaning filtered more as it's going on. And without it, without it, it sounds like this. Even triggering the stop button triggers it now. And with it. So you hear that little roll off in the filter at the end. So great. You can, of course, continue experiment with other effects, add reverbs on other effects, delays, whatever. But I'm happy with this. So let's bounce this down. I'm just going to set it till about there. And I'll set the front right to the downbeat. And I want to bounce it in place, but there's no region there. So I'm going to right click and go create empty region. And it triggered it when I created it just because of the automation. But there, I just placed it in that one bar zone that I want. And now I can go to the bounce menu and bounce the region in place. And I'll start by naming it drop. And I don't want to bypass the plugins. And let's just hit OK. And there it is. So let me mute the original. Here's our new track. I'll just zoom a little bit and we can see it and hear it. A little bit of a click at the end. I don't mind it, but of course you can always go into your file editor. I just hit W to open it up. And there's a couple of different ways of dealing with this. What I would probably do is select this and it rounded to zero crossings there and delete it. So we're going to modify the file and that's fine. And then maybe with what's left over here, do a little fade out, maybe even that much of it. And we'll go under functions, fade out. And there we have a little fade. So that should sound a lot smoother. Let's hear it back in the main window. So there you have a drop. Now you can drop that into your sampler and map it across your keyboard if you want. Layer it with kick drums, but you got a nice customized bass drop sample. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it stimulated some ideas. This is Eli Kranzberg for Logic Pro Expert. See you for more next time.